When you mess up something as special as a beef wellington, there's no way Ramsey's gonna let you walk away unscathed. But this contestant learned that the hard way. You see, anger is Gordon Ramsay's brand. In fact, over the years, critics and journalists like Jay Rayner have accused him of being a sad, inadequate man who glamorizes bullying. Now, before you come and tell me, oh, if you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen, you can't deny that Ramsey's style of management is abusive in a vacuum and has destroyed an entire generation of chefs. Nervous breakdowns, depression, and substance abuse are all results of a toxic work environment where you're at the mercy of your bullying bosses. Yeah, say that again. I said I'm not dick Yeah, you're chef. pissed, are you? I'm not <laughs> Look at me, look at me eyes! Not as pissed as I am! Now, don't get me wrong. Ramsey can look that way from the outside. But I think that's more on the people who try to badly imitate him rather than on the man himself. Still, let's hear a counter-argument out. Rejecting his tradition of hostility, Rayner said, whether it's done for the camera or not, shouting at people like that is just not helpful. Plus, it just makes them look like a tosser. You're only cooking tea. You're not saving people's lives. Now, there are different ways to look at it. If you ask me, I'm firmly in camp tough love. At least, most of the time. But let's take a look at a few times when contestants had to bear the brunt of his verbal explosions and didn't exactly feel the love. Just the tough. In season eight, Boris had a bit of a moment during his first dinner service. He was doing a stellar job at the pizza station for the blue team. But if only he could have just put his head down, kept his mouth shut, and just done his job. See, he heard Ramsey giving Melissa a hard time for a raw pizza, and Boris thought it would be funny to copy Ramsey's rant. But as you can imagine, it didn't go down well at all. Ramsey caught wind of Boris mimicking him and brought him over to the reg kitchen. He made Boris feel the raw pizza and gave him a serious talking to. Come here, you face. Oh, no. If you hadn't noticed, Ramsey was really angry. Not just a little mad, but seriously upset. Now look at me. Take the piss out of me now, face. He warned Boris that if he pulled a stunt like that again, he could kiss his time on the show goodbye. What's your game? I'm just here to cook, sir. Now look at me. You fucking take the piss out of me one more time in the middle of fucking service, yeah? Kiss your fucking ass goodbye. Is that clear? Understood, chef. Wake up! Will not happen again. And that's when Boris quickly promised he wouldn't do it again and owned up to not being very smart about it. On Italian night, he was handling the dessert station. But things went a bit haywire when he was spotted doing something entirely different. He was spotted washing dishes, and Ramsey didn't take too kindly to this. This is a fucking kitchen! I'm trying to fucking run a restaurant! Yes, sir. Come here, you! He scolded Boris for apparently not pulling his weight, making it clear that washing dishes wasn't what they needed at the moment. Get down there! F off, will you, yeah? Do it full time! Get on there! What a muppet. I've never been kicked out of the kitchen in my life. It was all my fucking fault. Yeah, Ramsey was so displeased that he kicked Boris out of the kitchen entirely. And the poor guy ended up cleaning dishes in the back store as a consequence, which he was already kind of doing. Ramsey didn't mince words, letting Boris know exactly how he felt. LA Market is not looking for a fucking head chef in pants! Sorry, Boris. Wrong timing. Later, during the sixth dinner service, Boris was assigned to the garnish station. Right from the start, on the first order of appetizers, he made a mistake by sending out rubbery shrimp. And just like you'd expect, Ramsey was furious. And in a fit of anger, he did this. I've got rubber shrimp now. Rubber. Rubber now. Rubber and cook the f as the blue team progressed to serving entrees, Boris had another slip up. When he sent his mashed potatoes to the pass, they turned out to be bland and just not up to the mark. To add to the chaos, Boris accidentally set some parchment paper on fire, which really got under Ramsey's skin. I'm fine. Oh, no, out of the way. Here we go, on fire, yeah. Unfortunately, the wrong area. From there, things went from bad to worse in the final order. Boris sent out soggy chicken garnish, and by this point, Ramsey was beyond frustrated. He simply couldn't take it anymore. Hey, come here. Yes, come here. Get out. Get out. Oh, so dramatic, I tell you. As for Boris, nothing improved for him, even in the next service. 
Uh, I'm thinking it's because of the stress and the heat. Boris was just about to slice his perfectly cooked meat on a dirty cutting board when Ramsey stepped in and stopped him in his tracks. And what do you know, Boris received a serious lecture about the importance of cleanliness in the kitchen. Stop. Wipe down your board, you dirty f***er. Let's go. You've cooked that perfectly, and you're about to slice on that. Disgusting! Sorry, chef. Oh, f*** Point taken, chef. Moving on to season nine. During the fifth dinner service, Monterey was in charge of the meat station, a position he felt pretty confident about. However, things quickly went south when he made a critical error. He sent up a raw Wellington, and Ramsey noticed the raw fat on the beef. Oh, hey, Monterey! Yes, chef. When the white fat marbling of a Wellington is not even fucking melted, that is raw. Ramsey made it clear how he didn't want to see him slicing into the meat if it was still undercooked. Don't continue fucking slicing it. Yes, sir. Put it back in. Don't send it to me fucking raw. Yes, sir. However, the problems didn't stop there. Monterey faced issues with Tommy, who wasn't responding promptly to his callbacks on orders, giving inconsistent timing. On a two pat, the Wellington. Renzi noticed this and had quite a bit to say about it. How can you keep on reheating your meat before it's overcooked? It's I don't know chef. how the f you nah, do it. It won't be, chef. It won't be. This led to some of the blue team's diners growing impatient. As if that wasn't enough, Monterey faced another setback when he discovered that his Wellington was overcooked. He instructed the team to hold back on serving them. However, this decision only angered Ramsey further. Oh, oh, come, on. Oh. come here, you! He berated both Monterey and Tommy for mishandling the protein, particularly the overcooked Wellingtons. Soon, Ramsey's frustration reached its peak, and as a consequence, this happened. Fuck off out of here! Get out of here, both of you! Piss off! Get upstairs and fucking sit and high five each other! But it looks like Monterey somehow always found himself in trouble. During the 20 year reunion dinner service, he was at the appetizer station alongside Jonathan. Initially, he and Natalie had good communication on appetizers, and the blue team was smoothly sending food out at a solid pace. However, trouble brewed when they transitioned to entrees. Monterey decided to lend a hand to Natalie on garnish, but made a mistake by putting broccolini into a cold pan. Ramsey stepped in lecturing him about the consequences. He'd have nothing but greasy and mushy broccolini on his hands if he stayed the course. Vegetables in a cold pan with cold oil turns them into what? Mush, chef. Start again. Yes, chef. It was an embarrassing moment for Monterey when he accidentally tossed the broccoli into the trash, leading Ramsey to sharply bark out another order. I need you at your best. Use your brain. Yes, chef. The chaos continued as Paul struggled with the fish, prompting Ramsey to replace him with Monterey and Jonathan. I'm, I'm struggling! The fish is no! It's the second time! However, Jonathan didn't assist as expected, and things took a turn for the worse when Monterey's snapper turned out raw. To top it all off, Ramsey was furious when Monterey walked away instead of facing the mistake together as a team. I am so pissed off. Sorry. He screws me. You walk away. Sorry, Where's sorry. your respect? This was the final straw for Ramsey, leading to his decision to kick the blue team out of the kitchen. Get out! Off. Oh. And a couple other stays, chef, and try to do something? Piss off! I mean, come on. At least he tried. If you ask me, I think it was a night filled with errors, miscommunication, and disappointment for Monterey and the rest of his team. And Ramsey's frustration reaching its breaking point was fair and valid. And I guess Krupa also came up on Ramsey's radar for her inconsistency during the same season. Krupa was handling the appetizer station alongside Elizabeth. She was aiming for a significant comeback after a shaky start, particularly with her first order of risotto. Krupa wanted to redeem herself in Ramsey's eyes, expressing her determination not to be remembered as the girl who couldn't distinguish between veal and filet, referring to her mistake in the previous challenge. However, things didn't go as planned. The risotto is like soup. Soup, soup, soup. 
fucking soup. So what happened is, when Krupa presented her risotto, Ramsey was far from impressed. He thought it looked more like soup and rebuked her for it. I know you don't know the difference between veal and beef, but you must know the difference between soup and risotto. Yes, chef. Despite feeling disheartened, Krupa managed to get her refire accepted and was determined not to make any more mistakes. However, things started spiraling out of control when she felt Gina was rushing appetizers out while her pasta wasn't ready. Frustrated, Krupa sent out raw spaghetti, putting the blame on Gina for disrupting her flow. Taste that! Hurry up! Raw! I'll give you another one, Chef. Gina definitely screwed me over. Ramsey intervened, admonishing both of them. He needed them to communicate better, but in the meantime, they had to start over. Krupa, all I'm begging for is communication. Unfortunately, Krupa's refired dish didn't fare any better. I can't take it anymore. All of you, come here! In my f***ing time! What's wrong with that? Yeah, Ramsey criticized it, likening the appearance to something very off-putting. It looks like baby food out of a f***ing tin. It's disgusting! Meanwhile, Elise accused Krupa of sinking the entire service, and this proved to be the tipping point for Ramsey. He reached his limit and decided to kick Krupa out of the kitchen, signaling the severity of the errors and the impact they had on the service as a whole. Hey, you, you, f off upstairs. Get out! I can't bear to look at you anymore. Look. No one's denying that these chefs messed up big time with some really basic and dumb mistakes during service. Ramsey's impatience is understandable because, well, these were some amateur errors that shouldn't have happened in a professional kitchen. Still, there are definitely better ways to reprimand and bring out the best in people without making them feel like they're being torn down. I really hate to see Ramsey resort to basic name calling instead of weaving in some of his classic constructive criticism. LA said it best in my opinion. In the real world, you wouldn't have someone yelling at you like that. You wouldn't have someone calling you a cow, a bitch. You wouldn't, because in the real world, if someone called you a cow or a bitch, you would walk up to him and sock him in the face. What do you think? Anyway, next on the list is him. One thing that I've noticed this year is that I've had a lot of people come back and say, wow, your new fries are delicious, or I can't believe that sauce on that chicken sandwich. To me, that's love. All right, let's be honest. I like Dominic. So this dude is now a chef at a minor league ballpark and has been helping his community throughout the pandemic, giving free food to the needy. Yes, he was a stay-at-home dad and he had been out of the kitchen for a while, but he had passion. And I think Jason should have been eliminated before him. Maybe HK just wasn't the show for him, and Dominic would have fared better on MasterChef. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know. You see, there came a point in his service when he had to discard a significant number of scallops because Jason's slow progress with the risotto caused a bottleneck in the kitchen's workflow. Terrible, terrible, terrible. It needs salt. It doesn't need salt. salt. Oh my god. I'll make it again. The scallops, they're going. However, Dominic had to take a lot of heat unfairly for it. Later on, Ramsey took notice of his struggle with boiling scallops and emphasized the importance of getting their texture right. Dominic admitted to the trouble he was having, but Ramsey couldn't resist a bit of mocking when Dominic ended up cooking more than required. Everything you've cooked, you've screwed. Have you ever cooked a scallop before? Things didn't fare well for Dominic during the nomination process either. Lou Ross selected him as the second nominee for elimination, with Bobby being the first. During his plea, Dominic tried to deflect blame onto Bobby, claiming he was misdirected because of him. He further revealed that he had to throw out a staggering 30 scallops that night, which didn't reflect well on his performance. That would be... 25? 30? 30. Unfortunately, Dominic's plea and explanation couldn't save him, and he was eliminated. Which, again, I think was unfair. Jason was easily the worst that night. It was due to his terrible risottos that Dominic had to throw away the scallops. And even then, Jason didn't improve and kept bringing disgusting, burnt excuses of food to the pass. Now, fast forward to season 10. Lying bastard, you f***ing knew if you hadn't got it. Why'd you do it? I really didn't understand you, chef. Clemenza's performance during the second service hit a bit of a rough patch. He made a, you could say, blunder by sending overcooked steak, and Ramsey took this mistake very seriously. I'm opening a steakhouse in Vegas. Take that. Yes, chef. Fuck off, all of you. Get out. 
Get out! That's his zero-tolerance policy in action right there. During the Mexican night service, Clemenza was on the appetizer station paired up with Justin. But things got messy when Clemenza forgot a part of his pork order, needing a couple of extra minutes to fix it. One more pork, how long? Better than I'm cooked. Two more minutes on the pork. Oh, Talk come about, on. this is ready, right here. Ramsey wasn't pleased, to say the least. Then, despite Clemenza's objection, Justin rushed the pork. And surprise, surprise, it turned out raw. And of course, Ramsey was furious. Hey, both of you, come in. Set of both done. That is it. Get out. Yeah, kick them both out of the kitchen. Talk about a disaster. In Clemenza's defense, he did try to warn Justin, whose fault I think it really was. Don't put out the pork, it's not cooked. Don't put out the pork, it's not cooked. Later on, during the 11th service, Ramsey gathered the blue team for a serious talk. Except for Robin. He laid it out straight, warning them all to shape up or ship out. Ramsey wasn't playing around when it came to their attitude and performance. Have a fucking meeting here, get a fucking grip, and I swear to God, when you walk back through that fucking door, change your attitude or fuck off. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Get it out now! As if that wasn't enough, when Ramsey pointed out some funky-looking cod, Brian called Clemenza out, saying he couldn't handle fish because he seemed all over the place. Look at the state of that. Look at the color of it. Clemenza just can't fucking get the hang of it. When Ramsey noticed Clemenza's dirty jacket, he didn't hold back. He straight up accused Clemenza of being a total mess. Well, in more poetic terms. You look like a slob. Your jacket's all undone. You're cooking like a donkey. Oh boy, Ramsey always has the greatest comebacks, doesn't he? Moving on, during the steak night in season 11, Jacqueline was holding it down at the meat station alongside Amanda, who wasn't feeling too confident. So Jacqueline took the reins as the station driver. But before I get into that, why don't you take a moment and hit this tab right here to become a member of the channel? From exciting surprises to a bunch of cool perks, there's a lot in store for you. What's more, my channel's Discord server is the place to be if you want to keep the discussion going. And guess what? It's free. And if you're someone who's looking for something extra, I got an exclusive server just for you. Anyway, let's get back to it. As the red team moved on to serving entrees, Jacqueline knew the pressure was on, especially regarding the meat. And she definitely didn't want Ramsey breathing down their necks or Amanda second guessing herself. Let's go, prime rib Susan, let's go. She's going to the table, wake up. The trouble escalated though, when both Jacqueline and Amanda seemed to be idling while Susan was slicing the prime rib. Hey, pedicure, manicure, how long? And we're waiting for Susan. The wait didn't sit well. And when Jacqueline mentioned to Ramsey that they were waiting on Susan, he called the entire team down. No, you f you. She's slicing the prime rib and you just stopped the whole fucking kitchen. Turns out, Susan hadn't been instructed to halt serving entrees, much to Ramsey's annoyance and frustration. You just stop sending entrees. Did you tell her to stop? No. Oh, really? Ramsey's anger was rising as he faced the issues. Jacqueline's attempt to manage the meat station didn't quite go as planned and the lack of communication among the team members only added fuel to Ramsey's growing impatience. We're now stopping serving meat that we're dying for. Have you ever heard anything so fucking stupid? No. Unless you give me your best, go home. After nailing the perfect steak dishes, Jacqueline encountered more trouble. There was a communication breakdown when Mary announced that the sea bass was ready, but Jacqueline didn't catch it leading to a delay in the service. The real problem struck when she sent out a filet mignon, and it arrived to the pass wrong. The easiest to cook, the most glamorous, the most in demand, cold and raw. Ramsey didn't hold back and went full throttle, berating Jacqueline and Amanda for messing up what he considered the easiest cut of meat. Frustrated and visibly upset, Jacqueline expressed her lack of trust in others, especially when Amanda didn't understand her meat temperature preferences. Can we have another one? Yes, I have another one. Oh, f me. Seeking help from Nedra, Jacqueline attempted a second filet mignon. Three different ladies cooking the same steak is a recipe for danger. Yes, chef. Clearly, because her second try also came out raw. Ramsey's frustration boiled over, and you won't believe what he did. Damn, I almost thought he was gonna bang his head against it. 
Anyway, this critical mistake led to Ramsey kicking Jacqueline, Amanda, Nedra, and Cindy out of the kitchen. You, 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 cough, all four of you, get out, get out! Jacqueline, although initially strong, had been struggling for quite some time now. In the previous family night dinner service, she was handling the fish station. Right from the get-go, on the first ticket, she fell behind, not having her scallops ready when everyone else was good to go with their dishes. Ramsey, noticing the lag, pushed her to pick up the pace and work faster. Can somebody wake her up? Push it, push it, push it. Jacqueline, yes, chef. come on you. The easiest dish to cook. However, when Jacqueline finally sent her scallops to the pass, they turned out rubbery. And we all know how much Ramsey loves his rubbery scallops. Oh, but look at her, touch that one there. Just touch it there. Come on, get me Just some go, more Jacqueline, in there. Yes, chef. Go, go, Jacqueline, go. You've got the easiest appetizer. Yes, chef. So which other furious Ramsey moment would you add to the list? Don't say the entirety of Hell's Kitchen, although that would technically be correct. In the ninth service of season eight, Ramsey completely blew up. In this service, everyone under-delivered. Except for, surprise, surprise, Trev. It's Trev, that risotto, yeah, it tastes fantastic. Keep everyone like that. Class act is always that guy. He took the lead for the men's team, dishing out perfectly executed risottos that set the bar high. However, Rob was struggling with his scallops, which turned out so raw that I'm shocked they came into contact with heat at all. Just eat that, the whole fucking thing, eat it. Yeah. Eat it! Poor Rob had to eat his shame, too. Anyway, he had to speed up, because there was a huge disparity between where the teams were. Rob! Yes, Chef! Wake up! Yes, Chef! Despite the, uh, very loud push, Rob's second attempt failed, too, with sous chef Scott pointing out how completely cold his pan was. In color on my scallop! Say! Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. And Ramsey's kitchen isn't a psych ward. Trev's success was overshadowed by Rob completely ruining everything. So the big boss had to step in and cook a batch himself. They're fucking raw! You take them out when they're fucking cooked. The yes, table's sir. eating, bar one. Meanwhile, in the reg kitchen, Ramsey asked why Nona's chicken was taking so long and quickly discovered she hadn't even started cooking it. Why that chicken's taking so fucking long? Because I didn't drop it right when you called for it. Oh, fucking hell. Back in the blue kitchen, the men pressed on with their entrees. However, Rob ran into trouble with his halibut. Despite Russell insisting to send it to the pass, the halibut turned out raw. Yeah, come on. Come here, you. Look at that. It's like split vomit. Those words were scary as hell. That'd stop my heart in an instant. Look at that. Hold on. It gets worse. Raw. Gone. So Ramsey had to sit down with Rob in the dining room, delivering a clear ultimatum. Five minutes to wake up, otherwise you're history. That's how mafiosos in movies deliver their lines. Absolutely chilling. And threatening. Oh, and he wasn't finished yet. And I'll do it on the section myself, and I'll run the f***ing hot plate on my f***ing own. Meanwhile, the Red Kitchen's diners were waiting for their entrees. Nona juggled cooking one order of beef while another rested. Ramsey pointedly accused Nona of overlooking an order, but she pushed back, insisting she'd just been waiting. You're not even listening. I'm, I'm trying to help you. I know, and I'm taking what you're well, saying. Well, it should be f***ing said by now. Yes, chef. Then, when Ramsey checked her station, he discovered the pan wasn't near hot enough to sear anything. Does that look f***ing hot to set 3 b Let me show you something, look. There you go. But Nona kept arguing. I just put him in. Get out of my f***ing way. Talking back at Ramsey is completely, utterly pointless. I don't know why so many contestants even bother. I'm not in your way! F*** off upstairs then! All right, fine. And, of course, the next sacrificial lamb was Vinny. Ramsey couldn't help but notice that what he was working on looked like a certain something. A big kid my nostrils ass. Hands down, the best trash talker. Anyway, a raw order of gnocchi ended up on the pass. Also, courtesy of Vinny. We're all the next. I, I'll fix it. Yes! Oh, boy. However, it didn't end there. 
Russell sent out raw chicken, earning himself a ticket out of the kitchen. Can I send this one? Get out, Russell! Get out! Because the chicken's raw! The women maintain their momentum, though, so at least they have that going for them. Meanwhile, Ramsey called for Rob to deliver the halibut. Ah, uh, fingers crossed. Get out. Chef, get out. Huh? Did I hear that right? Yeah, I don't know why I didn't see that coming. Rob was utterly confused and asked why he'd been evicted, only to be met with a face full of angry Ramsey. Why? Because the halibut's f***ing raw. That's why, Chef Rob. Get out! With Rob out of the picture, Trev stood as the lone soldier in the blue kitchen. Uh, hi. God, I can't tell if this is awkward or funny. Maybe both? But somehow, he summoned the courage to conquer his fears and churned out a decent salmon dish. But while Trev busied himself with the dessert course, the women handily finished up service. Man, pissing off Ramsay enough to get the boot is bad enough. But imagine him storming up to the dorms and demanding nominations himself. Takes it to a whole new level. And if I had a nickel for every time it happened, I'd have just one nickel. Yeah, because it only happened once. After both teams are kicked out of the kitchen, they receive an unexpected visitor. Now, usually it's a sous chef who does that sort of thing. I'd be seriously embarrassed if I was responsible for making the big man himself come up. So this was after the third service of season 14. First, there was a hiccup at the garnish station, which Michael was in charge of. Apparently, he had a hard time figuring out what his priorities were. Ramsey and sous chef James spotted him shirking his responsibility for the flatbread, leaving it to Millie instead. You're so keen about getting your stuff ready. How about looking overall? Yes, chef. I'm okay. Yes, chef. Hang out. Meanwhile, in the reg kitchen, Mika faced her own challenges. While she managed to send out her risotto, there simply wasn't enough for two portions. And when Ramsey tried to probe into the issue, he was met with nothing but silence. And how long's it gonna be now for the risotto? No answer. I look, half portions. Then something drastic happened. Chef, level 22, they found this on the salad of the scallops. It's a plastic. Yeah, a diner found plastic in a scallop. Like, how does that even happen? Anyway, Adam, being the stand up guy he was, took the heat for it. Another fucking dumb little mistake. Yeah, he was deadly serious. It's just so fucking basic. Basic? Absolutely. And yet, here we are. Over in the reg kitchen, Megan tried to help Mika with the risotto, but she thought she had it under control. Turns out, though, it had been way over-salted. This is too salty. Then imagine four or five tablespoons of that salty, disgusting rice. To which, Ramsay had a very important message. I've never seen such a bad start to service. Get it together! Now, that's an accomplishment. Looking like both teams are hosting amateur hour over here. Later, Ramsay spotted Michael carelessly placing a sizzling hot pan on a nearby rack. But he saw the potential danger a mile away. What are you doing? Chef, I put it away, chef. Michael attempted to explain himself, but Ramsay was not having it. They're talking, they go down and grab a pan and scold themselves. Yes, chef, you're right, chef. So why would you put no Sorry, chef. What are you doing? It was over here, chef, burning. Shut up! Can you wait till I f***ing finish? Add that to the list of things that have gone wrong. On the flip side, in the reg kitchen, after several attempts, the women finally managed to send out their appetizers, with Mika really making her third try count. T was handling the flatbread, but when Mika decided to lend a hand, it left poor Christine to handle the appetizers solo. Later, Mika discovered that the bottom of every single piece of flatbread had practically gone up in flames. Let me tell you something seriously sorry. I've got half of this table here. Where's the flatbread? Chef one is burnt. Damn! The men shifted their focus to the entrees, with Nick confidently convinced that his meat was cooked to perfection. But it wasn't his day. Hey, why? Look, look, it's f***ing raw! Anyway, after a prolonged struggle, the women finally managed to serve their appetizers. But that didn't mean they weren't gonna disappoint. Monique and Allison were convinced the scallops were up to par, but... Touch them! Just touch how rubber they are. Yeah, it's not gonna bite, it's f***ing dead. Then Ramsay had Nick refire the pork, which went just about as well. He said it was under again, but it... 
But like Einstein said, I guess it's all relative at this point. I guess it's all relative at this point. An hour into the service, tensions were high as the blue diners were getting antsy waiting for their entrees. Meanwhile, the women were just about wrapping up their last round of appetizers. But of course, something just had to go wrong. Taste the sticky, overjuiced cavatelli and the blend was of no richness, no sumptuousness, nothing. Nika's risotto was missing the mascarpone in the cavatelli sauce. The chaos continued when Ramsey caught Sarah mumbling something under her breath. Nah, you're not getting any pity here. And what do you say, Sarah? Can we try one more time? Get out! Yes, yes, sir. Then Nick sent up undercooked lamb, and predictably, Ramsey exploded at the sight of it. Don't know what else they were expecting. I sliced the lamb first, chef. And what did you tell yourself? It was a little under, chef. That was a lot more than a little. Raw white fat. After watching this train wreck of a service all night, Ramsey himself stormed into the dorms to give the contestants a piece of his mind. I have never set foot in these f***ing dorms, but I am so pissed off. And just like that, we've come full circle. Now it's time for a classic. I can't get enough of this one. It honestly gets better with every rewatch. I'm talking about the opening service of season four. When Ramsey kicked off the first ticket in the blue kitchen, he immediately noticed a certain someone was missing. Jason was caught red-handed outside on the patio, having a smoke break and picking at his toes. No, I am not kidding. And that got Ramsey louder than I've ever seen the guy get before or since. What's he doing? Jason! 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 I can still hear it in my nightmares sometimes. Anyway, over in the Reg Kitchen, when Sharon sent up her first risotto, Ramsey swiftly pointed out how poorly seasoned it was and ordered her to start over. Oh, come on, Sharon. It's like rice pudding. Back in the Blue Kitchen, Jason presented his first risotto to the pass. When Ramsey asked if he had tasted it, Jason responded with a very timely burp. But that didn't impress Ramsey one bit. Terrible, terrible. It needs salt. Oh my God. I'll make it again. So Jason had to start over, prompting Dominic to trash his scallops. And that set Bobby off, insulting Jason's skills and insisting he could single-handedly run the entire kitchen to boot. But in spite of his words, Bobby hesitated to lead the team, prompting Ramsey to call him out for it. Sitting pretty, right? That's your game, no, isn't it? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I just don't want to dig in over there. Yes. Yeah. Eh, fair enough. Then Ramsey sampled Sharon's refire, only to spit it out. And it was so garlicky that I'd bet good money his breath still reeks to this day. Sharon, enough's enough. F*** off and go put some more makeup on. You get on there. Oh, how progressive. Around 45 minutes into the service, both kitchens were a real mess. No food was getting out to the customers, and JP's smile wasn't enough to fix things. Then Jason sent out a burnt risotto. I mean, honestly, this guy. You can't even get two f***ing dishes together. That's how f***ing you be. I don't want any more embarrassment. And yeah, he definitely answered for it. I want you to taste what you're trying to serve Hell's Kitchen. Sit down. But that brings us to the funniest HK insult of all time. He's standing there pissing his pants looking for his tartar and coming out white chocolate crap. And he's just running around like a toilet brush. Never gets old. When Ramsey asked for someone to step up and take charge, Dominic suggested Bobby jump in, but Bobby refused, saying they had it under control and he didn't want to make it worse. And Jason was on a roll, sending another awful sauce to the pass, and Ramsey made the whole team taste it. He's really doing that a lot this video, huh? I'm sure they've been called worse by their mothers, but coming from Ramsey? Yeesh. At that moment, Lou Ross, feeling disappointed that his team hadn't tasted their own food, started to speak up more and actually give directions. Ramsey was impressed with his initiative and asked Bobby to hand over his captain's badge to the real leader. Thank God someone's got a pair of balls. Toilet brush to the rescue. 
As the Red Kitchen sent out their appetizers, the women shifted gears to serve their entrees. Unfortunately, Corey's chicken turned out rubbery and dry. Walking, playing around us. Lovely way to start, right? Over in the blue kitchen, Lou Ross injected some much needed energy into the team. Finally, Jason managed to actually nail his appetizers. Feeling like a champ, Jason took a moment to pat himself on the back. But the victory rang hollow. Most of the diners had already walked out in disappointment. Guess it doesn't matter how great you make a dish if there's no one left to eat it. Up next, Ramsey completely lost his shit during the family night service in season 7. So, as the first customers made their way into the dining room, including children, make a note of that for later. Ramsey kicked things off by calling out the first ticket in the red kitchen, dubbing it the red team's comeback night. Yeah, we'll see about that. When Ramsey inquired where the spaghetti was, the silence was deafening. Eventually, someone mentioned the spaghetti should be cooking at the appetizer station, which I'm sure you can guess how Ramsey reacted to. Get both of you. F off, will you? Embarrassing doesn't even cut it. Things went downhill when Siobhan attempted to cook her pasta, only to realize the water wasn't even boiling. Comeback night? More like go back home night. Unless the water is boiling. My fault. He was teaching intro to cooking 101. But unfortunately, due to Siobhan's blunder, no appetizers made it to the customers, which I'm sure they were thrilled with. We're gonna hold up the whole fucking diner because we're waiting for fucking spaghetti. In the blue kitchen, Caesar salads were actually coming out, but Salvatore found himself in a weird spot, unsure if the orders included one or two risottos. Why did he thought the one cup? Two risotto, one cappellini, one truffle salad. Fortunately, sous chef Scott was there to clarify the situation, calling for two. But Salvatore added more rice to his pan, much to Ramsey's dismay. When questioned if he did it because he discovered there were two orders, Salvatore denied it, which Ramsey easily saw through. Is it because you just found out there's two results No, no, no. Ramsey called the entire team down to address the situation. And eventually, Salvatore apologized for lying. He realizes we're one portion short. Then they start dumping fresh rice in there. But Ramsey could hardly trust them anymore. It's 10,000 times worse than working with the chef that can't cook. You just lost my trust. See, I wouldn't call it an outright act of dishonesty as much as a dumb, stupid mistake. There have been worse liars on the show. I should know, because I've made more than a few videos on the topic. And I've also covered some of the times chefs intentionally betrayed their teammates, too. Give that one a watch if you haven't already. It's totally worth it. Anyway, Salvatore's mistake caused a complete restart for that table, which was a huge setback. Meanwhile, the red kitchen was all but burning to the ground, considering Nilka sent out a risotto without a trace of lobster in it. Ramsey reprimanded her for it, and the expletive she let slip in front of the children. And he urged her to wake up and focus on doing her job. I need you to wake up rapidly. Just, just, just cook. While Jean-Philippe was dealing with a young girl in the dining room who had drawn a picture of Ramsey captioned with, You don't. He kindly advised her not to repeat Ramsey's words, and hinted that even Ramsey sometimes needed reminders about this. Don't use it. When he's out of the kitchen, I keep on reminding him, Chef, we can't do that. I think it's cute of JP to give that warning, but unfortunately for him, Ramsey's creative insults are part of this fandom's lexicon now. Go ahead and drop your favorite in the comments. Anyway, back in the reg kitchen, Fran mistakenly believed her scallops were ready for service. However, Ramsey couldn't help but notice how horrendously overcooked they were. He made her feel them, so she could tell exactly how badly she messed up. Just touch! That's rubber! That's burnt to fuck! Siobhan struggled with her own set of scallops, too. And Ramsey was beyond through with seeing this bunch of amateurs butcher one of his favorite foods. It's a disaster! I swear to God! Yeah, so I actually had to Google that word. It means exactly what you think it means. I'll leave it at that. I'll throw every one of you out here, and then I'll do the because this is Meanwhile, Nilka swearing like a sailor definitely wasn't helping anyone. Ah! So much for no swearing. Still, I can't help but point out how ironic that is. 
Anyway, back in the blue kitchen, Salvatore only sent out three portions of chicken when he needed four. Worse yet, one of them was disgustingly raw. Salvatore convinced Jason to return it to the oven, which Ramsey despised. Form of communication. Benjamin, Ed, Jay, I need him to talk to me. Eventually, the Red Kitchen's appetizers finally made their way to the customers. However, things quickly went south when Scott, who was responsible for the beef, thought it needed eight minutes to cook when it really needed four. Ramsey was clueless as to why it wasn't ready to go. Scott defensively claimed he was instructed for only one order of beef that day. This didn't sit well with Holly, who felt insulted, urging Scott to simply pay attention to the ticket. I was told one, one beef all day. You were told one beef all day? Who told you that? Let me just say that his constant use of Lee annoyed the f out of me. Oh, sorry, no swearing. Sorry, Ramsey. Anyway, Mr. Lee sent out his Wellingtons, but shirked responsibility once again blaming his team instead. I don't have a lot of talent or skill in a fine dining restaurant, it's just impossible. Dude was about to be grounded. Ramsey was already exhausted, but imagine how he felt when he discovered the Wellingtons were raw. Even is not even cold. Just put it down! Just touch it! Ramsey pulled Scott aside and into the pantry in a bid to understand exactly what the hell was going on. But Scott was seemingly at a loss and claimed he was doing nothing. But really, he was doing worse than nothing. But no, it's not even cold. It's raw, Scott. There's no cold in the middle. Scott assured Ramsey it wouldn't happen again. But upon returning to the kitchen, yes, they were undercooked, but I wanted to get it out, and I didn't think they were too bad undercooked that they wouldn't be able to. Go out. All right, I'm just completely lost now. But the red team wasn't any less confusing considering the beef and chicken dishes sent to the pass were shockingly raw, leaving Ramsey seething with anger. He demanded the red team feel them in order to drive his point home. Did you touch it, touch it, touch it, touch it. And with everyone talking over each other, Ramsey snapped. He kicked out the entire team, including Nilka, who begged and pleaded to stay. But Ramsey's word is law, and Scott and Andy were already gearing up to salvage this mess. All of you, get out! Get out! I'll finish it! And this funny little moment was the perfect capstone. Out! Get out! Get out! Sous chef Scott and Andy stepped into the red kitchen and got a first-hand look at exactly how bad things were. Wow, they're really bad, huh? Yeah. What a night. Just talking about it was exhausting, so I'm gonna leave you with a question. Wrong answers only. Remember Trev from season eight? Well, before the ravioli challenge even got going, Ramsey kindly asked the chefs to hold off on the smokes for just 48 hours because it was damaging their palates. Seems reasonable, right? Well, not for Trev. Come on, man, this is not the time or place to be trying to quit cigarettes for crying out loud. Anyway, his team won the challenge, and as a treat, they were treated to a swanky helicopter trip to Palace Verde's Oceanside Resort, alongside a day of golfing and a lavish dinner to end things off. However, even amidst the scenic views and luxurious setting, Trev seemed to be nursing a grudge. He was still frustrated about his teammates' oversight in tasting his dish. I didn't want to be sixth. I just want to be part of the team. I didn't feel like that this morning. And as the dinner progressed, things got a bit tense. Out of genuine curiosity, Russell asked Trev if he believed he would have beaten Melissa in the first round. Of course, Trev had no doubt that he could have. He argued that he just wanted to feel like a valued part of the team. But his team wasn't having any of it. They told Trev to stop souring the moment with his grievances. I'm pissed about it. I really fing am. What is the we fucking won. issue? Holy Christ, you obviously don't have your ears open. Yet, despite Rob's plea to drop the drama, the argument showed no signs of slowing down. Stop acting like we just bypassed your dish like you was Exactly. Yes. didn't even taste my sh though. I was over there like a big kid trying to get into the game. I want to play. Come on, here's my plate. 
And nobody seems to get it though. I mean, what? Anyway, after the storm settled down a bit, Vinny offered a genuine apology to Trev for their oversight, in an attempt to smooth things over. However, when they returned to the kitchen, Vinny lost his patience. He straight up asked Trev to cut the act and stop acting like, well, I'll let him say it. So let me ask you, Trev, can you stop being a whiny bitch? I wasn't being a whiny bitch. I'm done with these guys. Today pissed me off a whole lot. I'm with the guys. Trev was overreacting. Anyway, he decided to extend an olive branch to the women. He probably thought it was a good move to seek some support from them. Not like he was gonna get any from the guys. I'm gonna make these guys look like fucking fools. I'm sick of these assholes. I'd rather be on your guys' team. And enter Gail. Trev decided to unload his grievances on her and made it clear how badly he wanted to switch teams. Now, here's where things went from slightly uncomfortable to downright cringeworthy. Trev rather audaciously asked Gail if she wanted to make out. Uh, just joking, of course. Unless... Unfortunately for Trev, she was nowhere near up for it. You don't want to make out a little bit. It was worth a try. <laughs> was it a joke? Was it edited out of context? Well, I don't care. It's still absolutely insane. Dude tried to unload his emotional labor on the first woman he saw. Now, Trev had one of the biggest flops in the show's history after snagging that coveted black jacket. I'm talking a serious rough patch. And guess what? Instead of trying to fix things like a normal team player, he flew off the handle, saying some seriously messed up stuff. How do you get a little whiny bitch like that to just shut up and cook? Take her off my hands, take her up back and put a bullet right between her beady little eyes. See, not kidding. He actually said this in the confessional, like he had time to mull it over. He wasn't a funny anti-hero or something, he was a downright awful sexist jerk. Now, Sabrina might not have been everyone's favorite person, but what went down was totally out of line. I honestly can't fathom why everyone's on his side. Personally, I'm not on that bandwagon. Here's my theory. Folks root for Trev because he seems like he had a tough time growing up. Maybe he dealt with some bullying? And then he got on this underdog journey of sorts in Hell's Kitchen. I get that. I really do. But that doesn't change how Trev's got this major attitude problem. He's got this knack for belittling everyone he can whenever he gets the chance. And that's just not cool. And let's not even start on his cooking skills. Definitely nothing worth writing home about, anyway. Fast forward to season 18, and guess what? Same old story. This time, his chops, or, well, the lack thereof, finally caught up to him by episode 11. Like, remember those avocado kisses? I really dislike this. Yeah, they were a disaster putting his awful culinary skills on full display. It was like deja vu from season eight when he got roasted by Ramsay and the judges for that horrifying frog leg dish he presented. I don't know how you make a frog leg look like that, Trevor. You know, I, because I don't, I just didn't know what the hell it was until you told me what it was. No, I was a little scared at first, frankly. Maybe it tastes better. Yikes, but wait, there's more. The most positive thing I can say about it just adds insult. It's very small to injury. 31 out of 50. 62 out of 100. Ouch. Next, this might be one of the worst things a contestant has said on the show. I like more than screwing up the front of the house than making some bitch server clean it up. Yeah, Coop's abusive behavior towards the servers wasn't just bad. It was completely unacceptable. Disrespecting service staff not only creates a toxic work environment, but also reflects poorly on his professionalism and character. But guess what? Karma came knocking for Coop eventually. His team ended up losing to the women 1-3. to three. And the punishments? They had to deal with deliveries of raw pine nuts for pesto preparation. And on top of that, clean up the mess in the dining room including goo and eggshells. It's ironic how the very thing Coop seemed to enjoy creating ended up being his responsibility to clean. Now, during his last service, Ramsay caught our buddy here attempting to cook salmon and sea bass together in the same pan. Cue Ramsay's not-so-subtle accusation that Coop was the reason for the kitchen's impending doom. 
reminding him that the fish needed their own private hands. They don't cook sea bass and salmon, a white fish and oily fish in the same pan. That's like cooking lamb and New York strip in the same pan. A bit of a basic rule. What the f are you doing, young man? Just doing it the wrong way, chef. Look at me, look at me. Yes, chef. You're screwing you, your team, and me. Yes, chef. Separate pants. Yes, chef. Here, here. And then came Polly, calling out Coop's inconsistent timing, which left our man feeling a tad dismayed. Coop went on and on about how one messed up station could bring the whole ship crashing down, pleading for a bit of a comeback. I told Coop that I need five. I needed five, five minutes ago. I need five. I need five minutes in order to get it right. And, of course, a whole buffet of mistakes from the blue team ended up fulfilling that prophecy for Ramsey to kick them out of the kitchen. But when it came time for the blue team to figure out who to nominate, Coop couldn't contain his fury. He lashed out, demanding to know why they couldn't even get through a single service, before adding a melodramatic touch by chucking a chair in sheer rage. Why the f can't we do this? Then things escalated further when Polly jumped in, and the two got into a heated argument, each pointing the finger at the other for messing up big time that night. Push up. Why are you putting up those two sea bass? How many times did you call five minutes? Coop, you up all day today. You up all day. You're going up there no matter what. But this is where things got ugly. When Polly called Coop out for breaking that chair, Coop dropped a pretty threatening warning. Polly, you're lucky that was just a chair, not your face off of the fireplace, you little piece. That's crossing some serious lines, buddy. I mean, it's one thing to be frustrated, but throwing stuff and making threats? Not cool. Not cool at all. I don't think that that's somebody who's a leader or a team player. Anyway, during nominations, he kicked things off by suggesting he had more respect from the blue team than Polly boldly claiming the team would do better sans his nemesis. Then, Ramsey swooped in with the million dollar question. How do you rate your performance tonight? I think that my performance tonight should be a six or a seven. Could have been much, much better. Well, he generously awarded Polly a five. The plot thickened when Coop hinted that Polly felt threatened by him, trying to orchestrate his ousting. So Polly spilled the beans about Coop's chair-smashing escapade, and Ramsey grilled him about it. In the end, Coop got the axe for his fishy performance and not backing up his confident talk. The longer you've stayed in this competition, the more I realized that you are not backing up the talking. You're not ready. Thank you for the opportunity, Chef. Thank you, Coop. Thank you. Good night. I'm sure some potential destruction of property charges didn't help smooth things over either. Later in his exit interview, Coop let loose, claiming Pauly should have been standing in his place instead. He seemed pretty fed up with hearing folks boast about skills they didn't have and didn't hold back in flinging a parting insult at Pauly. I'm tired of listening to people say how good they are when they're not. Pauly, little ingrate piece Napoleon complex. At least Coop went out with a bang, I guess. Dude had a hell of a grudge against poor Polly, though. No doubt. Okay, is it me, or did it seem like Robert really took a turn for the worse when he returned in season six? His attitude went from jolly to downright entitled especially in his last episode, where he launched a pretty sleazy rant at Andy. I bet my whole damn savings account that you ain't ever gonna win this, all right? Whether it be me and not win it, you damn sure it ain't winning it. The image of that happy-go-lucky chubby chef? Well, that was a thing of the past. Or better yet, a figment of my imagination, cause that guy never really existed in the first place. Would so you like, suck think a, you're fucking suck slow? A suck a I have to give it up to Andy. If somebody said that to me, I probably would have put my cast in his face. But hey, Andy did handle it all with a lot of dignity. During his last dinner service, Robert landed on the meat station, and boy was it a hot mess. His lack of organization led to a parade of inconsistent chops making their way to Ramsey, which is a really easy way to piss the guy off. 
thinner than the bone. I go to this table. I've got a bit of... I'm not too sure there. I swear to you, that's how I cut off the bone. Is that the best you can do? Hell no, it's not the best. Well, give me the fucking best. I am, chef. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, Robert served up a very lovely rabbit leg. Happy now? Ramsay had seen enough and slammed the brakes on the blue kitchen for the night. Don't so start acting like a baby. I'm not acting like a baby. Shut it. Switch it off. All of you, you're done. Naturally, the blue team's loss in the service didn't go unnoticed, with Ramsay putting it squarely on Robert's shoulders. And I'm holding a fucking rabbit, still with fur on. Even during his elimination, Robert was still going at it. If you win Hell's Kitchen, I fucking hang up my fucking chef clothes for life. So you hear me? And you better believe he kept going in the confessional after his walk of shame. Andy, your time is come, man. Guaranteed. And let's not even get started on the finale. Dave picked Robert, and boy, did he almost lose because of it. Who in their right mind decides to mess with the chef during the finale? Robert found himself handling the appetizer station during dinner service. When Dave urged him to hustle up and fire up the first order, something odd seemed to be brewing in Robert's mind deliberately taking his sweet time, Robert leisurely sent out his risotto to the pass. <laughs> no matter what the ticket was, I'm gonna bang it out. Thank you, Robert. All right, boys. Despite the slow pace, Dave seemed satisfied with the dish and even hailed Robert as his secret weapon, his ace in the hole. Oddly enough, Robert's lackadaisical performance somehow managed to help Dave maintain a decent flow of appetizers heading out into the dining room. Then he informed Dave that they were running low on mushrooms before cunningly deciding to skimp on adding enough to the next couple of orders. When Ramsey noticed this, Robert attempted to justify his actions by claiming that Dave instructed him to do so. But Dave quickly fired back clarifying that he merely suggested moderation with the mushrooms, not a total omission. And he certainly wouldn't have approved of such incomplete dishes. We were down on mushrooms and he told me to put less in there. I said, just don't go crazy with the mushrooms. Feeling slighted by Dave's response and seemingly upset about being called out, Robert believed Dave had crossed a line by throwing him under the bus. Dave was just covering his mother monkey ass. He looked like Nixon. I'm not a crook. In an apparent act of retaliation, Robert made a deliberate move to mess with Dave by intentionally botching a refire. And I love stirring up the shit. So let me just give me, just give me. It's cold, bro. Fuck, come on, Robert. Oops, you dropped it. Looking like a horse's ass. That's your problem. Man, I miss season five, Robert. Uh, by the way, have you heard of the butterfly effect? Either way, stick with me here. It'll all make sense in a moment. In season four, Vanessa entered the fourth service determined to redeem herself after a previous disastrous performance. She seized vocal control in the reg kitchen when the first ticket was called, expressing a strong desire not to repeat her past mistakes. Ramsey praised her chowder, calling it beautiful, and encouraged the woman not to lose their well-earned momentum. Nice, Vanessa, soup lovely. As the orders rolled in, Vanessa successfully pushed out half of her appetizers, but the focus then shifted to entrees. However, the kitchen encountered a hiccup when Shayna accidentally lit the appetizer station on fire. Oh my god. Oh, me. Shayna's on fire. Hey, but don't burn the fucking kitchen down, yes? Unfortunately, things took an unexpected turn when, in an attempt to help douse the flames, oil splashed onto Vanessa's hand, resulting in a second-degree burn. This unforeseen accident had a huge impact, not to mention Vanessa's mental state. The chain of events triggered by Shayna really showed how even the smallest incidents can lead to significant consequences, altering the course of Vanessa's journey on the show and her life in general. That's the butterfly effect for ya. Vanessa swiftly requested ice from Ramsey. Her hand was visibly red and the pain appeared unbearable. And I wouldn't have blamed her for completely breaking down. Oh, that sort of fing hurt. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
A medic applied a soothing lotion to her hand, but unfortunately, the pain persisted. With the cream proving ineffective, what they thought was a treatable situation suddenly became a lot more serious, prompting Vanessa's transfer to the hospital. Her sudden departure from the kitchen left the woman anxious and worried about her well-being, not to mention a woman down. She's gone for a few minutes, and she's not coming back, she's not coming back, and I'm just thinking, oh, sh what the hell's going on out there? After returning from the hospital post-service, Vanessa received a warm welcome from everyone. However, she shared the sobering news that she was scheduled to see a plastic surgeon the following Monday and expressed uncertainty about the future, considering she had lost functionality in her right hand due to the injury. You know, right now I can't even move my hand. The morning of the next challenge arrived, but Vanessa's injury hindered her ability to participate independently. This situation left her feeling immensely frustrated as she couldn't contribute to the team's efforts. It's understandable, you know, she doesn't want to let us down and we want to help her through this. It's impossible not to feel for her here. But during the fine dining pizza challenge, Vanessa displayed a ton of determination despite her injury, expressing her commitment to contribute in the kitchen as best she could, despite the obstacles posed by her burn. In the kitchen, then I'm gonna try to do something. However, the following day, during dinner service prep, Vanessa encountered significant difficulties due to her injury, feeling overwhelmed and ineffective in her role. It's really difficult to not be able to bang out prep with everybody else, you know? to feel so fucking useless. The pain and limitations imposed by her injury became too much to bear, prompting her to seek counsel from Ramsey. I like being in the kitchen and not being able to cook the way that I'm used to cooking. And it's killing me. But you still have every chance of winning this competition. Opening up to him, Vanessa candidly discussed the agony she was experiencing and her struggle to perform at her usual capacity. Ramsey, recognizing the severity of her situation, presented her with a difficult choice to either stay and continue competing or to withdraw from the competition due to her injury. The decision weighed heavily on Vanessa, affirming that she wasn't one to quit or succumb to weakness. If I can't be here 100%, Chef, I don't want to be here. Ultimately, though, after careful contemplation, Vanessa made the courageous choice to withdraw from Hell's Kitchen. She expressed her unwillingness to stay if she couldn't give her best, wanting to compete at her peak performance. Ramsey, while acknowledging the regrettable turn of events, respected her decision. My team is better off without me than with me. Good luck, guys. But how many of you remember season seven's mother sauce challenge? It's the challenge where Siobhan worked with hollandaise sauce and encountered a few hiccups along the way. During the cooking process, there was tension as ingredients were taken by the others, causing some frustration. Additionally, when it came to checking the doneness of her chicken, she dragged her feet despite being advised otherwise. This decision led to a bit of an undesirable outcome later on. I'm gonna pull my chicken at the very last second. So if I was you, I'd try and get it out now. Just check and make sure it's cooked. I think my chicken's good. When presenting her dish, she misidentified what she thought was a Cornish hen, only for Ramsey to correct her. That's a pigeon. Not knowing the meat you cooked? Come on! This led to an awkward moment, but the real issue arose when Ramsey discovered this. What's all the blood there for? The dish was still undercooked, and blood started flowing like it was a scene out of a horror movie. Absolutely disgusting. As a result, Ramsey, rather understandably, declined to taste it. Mom, I'm so sorry. I mean, pink is pink, but blood is raw, right? I'm not even gonna taste it. Ah, oh, you hate to see it. The red team, unfortunately, but obviously, lost the challenge. And to make matters worse, they were slapped with the punishment of deep cleaning both kitchens, well suited up like they were trying to explore some nuclear wasteland. Siobhan, poor thing, started getting worried because she's apparently allergic to a bunch of things 
items. Not just food, but body products, perfumes, and cleaners too. Oh, I got a, a, a whole ton of stuff that I'm allergic to. Dyes and perfumes and shampoos and body washes and soaps, apple juice, peanut oil, or any sort of cleaning products. For the most part, I'm, I'm highly allergic to it. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, she started getting hives on her arms and neck and her skin was getting real pale. You're allergic? Yeah. What happens? A hive, chef. I get it in my, my throat, my throat closes up. I try not to. I have some hive, a couple hives already. So she made a beeline for the back hallway to find a medic, and the medic immediately whipped out the scissors and cut off her outfit like they were about to perform emergency surgery right then and there. Having any trouble breathing or anything? No, not yet. We caught it fairly early on. Let me know if you start having trouble breathing. All right, sounds good. You know, stuff like this really makes me think. Specifically, that Hell's Kitchen doesn't give a damn about allergies. Take Manda and Barbie, for instance. They had some serious food allergies, yet they were still expected to whip up dishes that were loaded with those same ingredients. I mean, come on, that's a slam dunk lawsuit waiting to happen. Aren't contestants supposed to be screened for allergies and, you know, not put in potentially life-threatening danger? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, if you thought this video was crazy, make sure to check out the next one right here. It's even better!